Hello everyone. Welcome once again to our course on Accountancy Research. This is your professor, Danny Araneta Kabulay, and we will be talking about our very important topic for this week, week number four. We will talk about identifying the research problem. So we will start with this video. This is video lecture number 16. So for this week, we will be talking about planning a research report, the terms of reference, statement of the problem, scope and limitations, and definition of terms and acronyms. So for this particular week, we will be talking about these five topics. But first things first, make sure that you are already subscribed to my YouTube channel. Why is it important to subscribe to my YouTube channel? So every time I'm going to upload a new video, you will receive right away a notification. That means you will never be late in reading the lecture notes or watching the videos or answering the recitation at the end of each video lecture. So it's very important to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification button. Make sure that you click the notification button so you will be alerted for every video, new video that I will be uploading, okay? So let's start with this week's topic with video lecture number 16. For this video lecture, we will be talking about planning a research report. Before pursuing any research-based undertaking, it is crucial to plan extensively in order to minimize problems, unnecessary cost, and avoidable delays. Siyempre, napakahalaga magplano kung tayo ay magkoconduct ng research. Pag wala tayong plano, baka mapagastos tayo ng mahal o kaya makaka-encounter tayo ng maraming mga bulilyaso, maraming problem, at mga delays, no? Kasi nga, wala tayong plano. Walang direksyon ang ating research. The process may take three to six months to do the field work and to put the work together. But you know, planning can take about one week all the way to maybe one month. So, it pays importance to be a good planner when you are undertaking research. Many new practitioners in the field of accountancy are not too conscious about planning. So, basta banat lang sila ng banat. Tapos, marirealize nila ang dami nilang palpak. Okay? What are the steps in the planning phase? Okay? What are the planning phases? Ika nga, no? First, there's the conceptualization phase. We'll talk more about that later. Data gathering phase. Then, data analysis. Then, we also have report writing. And last but not the least, it's the presentation of the research output. So remember, there are five phases in planning a research. Let's talk about the first one. When we talk about the conceptualization phase, definition of the main research problem and sub-problems is crucial. Kailangan matumbok natin. Ano ba talaga itong nire-research natin? Ano bang problema ang gusto nating ma-solve by virtue of this research undertaking? Of course, hindi lang naman isa ang research problem. Meron tayong main research problem, but there are smaller problems around it. Kailangan pagtuunan din natin ng pansin yung tinatawag natin ng mga corollary problems or also called sub-problems. Then, identification of the appropriate type of research application. Is this an action research? Is this a feasibility study? Is this an industry research? Is this a quality audit? Or is this a financial audit? Anong klaseng research ba itong ginagawa natin? Kailangan malaman natin yon para makagawa tayo ng tamang format because every type of research has a distinct format and it is uh, designed for a particular audience. Then determine the components of the research undertaking as well as the format of the report. Of course, kailangan malalaman muna natin anong klaseng research. Then kasunod na niyan yung format. Ascertain how research project will be funded. Sino bang gagastos? Kasi 
wala namang research na libre. Of course, libre yung pag internet Pero kung kailangan magkaroon ka ng field work, you have to go out, you have to interview people, you have to travel, you have to, you know, go to faraway places, uh, or you need to photocopy certain documents, you need, you know, money for your expenses. That's why, sino ba ang popondo nito? Okay? If you are a professor in a school, most likely it's your school who will fund the research. Or ikaw ay nasa audit or consultant ka, yung client mo ang magbabayad ng mga expenses mo. Yan yung tinatawag natin na out-of-pocket expenses. Hindi yan kasama sa fees. Iba yung bayad sa iyo bilang professional fees pag ikaw ay pinagawa ng feasibility study o pinagawa ka ng business plan. Then, part of conceptualization is calculation of the research budget and allowable contingency. Siyempre, magkano ba yung total na budget natin? Yan ang hihingin natin sa kliyente. Okay, dun sa ating sponsor or engager. Pasobrahan mo na. Kasi for emergencies, at saka baka tumaas sa mga bilihin ngayon, yan ang tinatawag natin na contingency. Usually, 10% is okay. Let's say yung budget mo ay uh, 30,000. Gawin mo ng 33 or 35,000. Pasobrahan mo ng konti. Okay? Para meron kang allowance. Okay? Then, definition of terms. You have to define the definition of terms of reference. No? Ano ba ang nasasakupan ng iyong trabaho? Ano ba yung boundaries? Ano bang pinapagawa sa iyo ng engager? Kailangan maliwanag yon. Usually, yung terms of reference ay nakalagay din yan sa kontrata. Okay? But, antimano, during the conceptualization, maliwanag na dapat siya. Okay? You have to clarify with the client or the engager what exactly is the work to be done. Ano yung pwedeng gawin? Ano yung hindi pwedeng gawin? Okay? That is the conceptualization phase. Then, the second phase is the data gathering phase. Ano naman ang kasama dito sa data gathering phase? Identification of the limitations of the research undertaking. Ano yung limitations mo? You might be limited in terms of budget. Okay? Hindi naman umaapaw ang pera. Or you're, you have a time constraint. Okay? You have to finish the work in one month. Okay, you don't have 10 months, you have only one month. Another constraint is, for example, ngayong pandemic, there are travel restrictions. You cannot just travel to any, country, any uh, countryside area or any province because there are limitations by the IATF because of the pandemic. So our mobility is limited. Then you talk about mobility, manpower, supplement, and documentation issues. Like, you know, how many times do you have to go out? and travel or get out of the house or get out of the office. And then, ilang tauhan ang kailangan mo to support you in the field work at saka dun sa paggawa ng report, ilan ang kailangan mong tauhan. Kung minsan, ang isang research project, limang tao ang gumagawa. Meron kang lead researcher and then the others are research assistants. Okay? Kagaya ko, pag ako nagre-research, I only have one research assistant and then I am the lead researcher. Okay? And then documentation issues. Do you need to take pictures? Do you need to photocopy certain documents? Do you need to record, videotape certain uh, proceedings? So that's part of documentation. Kaya very handy yung ating cell phone. Because your cell phone could be a camera, it could also be, be a video cam. Okay? Or it could also be, uh, in, in Mr. Photocopier, you just take pictures of the document that you like. Okay? Then, identification of appropriate data gathering techniques. Ano ba yung mga gagamitin mong techniques? Are you going to survey? Are you going to interview? Are you going to look at documents? Etc. We will talk about that next week, data gathering. Okay? Then, identification of target respondents, participants or subjects. Sino ba ang iyong i-interviewin? Sino ba ang iyong kakausapin? Sino ba ang oobserbahan mo? Anong documents ang kailangan mo? Yan. Okay? Then, determination of the sampling technique. Of course, if you want to survey all the banks, you cannot do that. It's impossible. Not all the banks will cooperate. If there are 60 banks, maybe you'll just interview 5 to 10. Okay? And that's a good sample already. Maybe 20% is good. Then, you have to determine what are their characteristics. Then, you formulate the research instruments. So, gagawa na tayo ng mga survey forms, interview guide questions, uh, rubrics or matrices, etc. Then, you have to validate the research instrument. Kailangan 
ma-validate natin kung yung mga gagamitin nating survey questions ay tama at appropriate. Okay? Now, the third phase is the data analysis phase. After we have gathered all the data, we are now ready to screen and classify data gathered between useful and discarded data. Ano bang data ang magagamit? Anong data yung hindi natin dapat gamitin? You have to be discerning. Hindi lahat ng data na nakuha mo ay gagamitin mo. Some data are not good. You have to discern. You have to decide. Then you have to apply tools for data analysis. Ano ba itong mga tools na to? Ito yung mga statistical tools. We will talk about that uh, two weeks from now. Okay? And then you interpret the results and findings of your study. Then we have fourth phase. The fourth phase is when you do the planning. The fourth phase is report writing phase. Ascertaining the estimated length of the report. Gano ba kahaba itong report na to? 20 pages, 40 pages, 50 pages. In some cases, the report could exceed 100 pages. It depends on the client and how extensive the client wants the research to be. Then, you have to be consistent in your writing style and format. Follow strictly the format. Then, the presentation of the narrative and the visuals are very important. You have to work according to standards also. In which case, we can use the APA format, the American Psychological Association. They have a format for reports. We can follow that. I'm going to teach that to you in uh, four weeks time. Okay? Then, Reproduction of the report. How many copies do you need to reproduce? Depende kung sino ba ang mga magbabasa ng report mo. Or in some cases, you can just give the soft copy and let the engager reproduce it for you. Pwede rin ganon. Then, citation of the sources and acknowledgement of support teams and stakeholders. So you have to acknowledge sa mong kinuha yung data. Sino nagbigay sa'yo ng data? You have to cite them. Very important. And acknowledge the people who help you in the research. And then finally, the presentation phase. So here, you need to prepare your presentation slides for your client. No? Kasi ipepresent mo yung output mo, yung research study mo. Then professional grooming. So here, you have to really dress up. No? What is a professionally groomed researcher going to look like? Okay. So business-like, business attire is preferred. Then prepare for cross-examination. This is what you call now the open forum, the discussion, or Q&A. So don't be afraid. If you did the research properly, you should be able to answer all, if not most, if not all of the questions. Okay. So the purpose of the Q&A is that for the client to clarify certain areas that they do not understand, or maybe they're not sure. Okay. So don't be afraid because ikaw naman ang gumawa niya eh. So alam mo dapat yan. Okay. So wag ka matakot sa Q&A. Okay. That should be clear in your head. Now that we've done the lecture for this particular day, no, video lecture number 16, let us now look at a sample case study. Okay, So we see this bunch of educators walking from the University of Makati. You know, University of Makati is one of the 121 local colleges and universities in the Philippines whose funding is dependent on the allocation by the cities, municipalities, and provinces. Halimbawa, alam niyo yung mga syudad, mga municipality, mga probinsya, nangongolekta yan ng taxes. So yung mga taxes na nakolekta nila, a portion of that will be used eventually for projects, no? Like, uh, or any government school that they have. So yung pondo ng mga government schools, like City of Malabon University, nanggagaling yan sa City Hall. So, from the tax collections, okay? Kaya, very important yung taxes, paying taxes, no? Kasi napupunta yan sa mga eskwelahan din, okay? Pinupondohan niya yung pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. So, depende. Kung mayaman yung syudad ninyo, malaki ang perang makukuha ng university o ng college, okay? So, yung mga malalaking universities talaga, like University of Makati, Pamantaso ng Lunsod ng Maynila, yan yung mga malalaking pondo ang nakukuha, okay? So, the number of freshmen, no? Eh, na ma-accept ng mga universities niyan depende dun sa budget. Pag malaki yung budget, they, then they can accept more freshmen. Kaya kung bababa ang intake nila ng freshmen, that means uh, mahirapan sila. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, konti lang yung pwede nilang ma-admit kasi maliit lang yung budget. Okay? Now, this financial impediment or constraint is also the reason why many local schools 
fail to provide competitive salaries to their teachers and employees. Napansin nyo between private schools and government schools, usually sa mga local universities and colleges, mababa lang ang sweldo ng mga teachers. Kaya, hindi sila makakuha rin ng magagaling na teachers dahil nga uh, yung magagaling na teachers, mahal ang bayad sa kanila. Okay? So, kung sino-sino na lang ang pwedeng makuha magtuturo na hindi naman ganun kagalingan, kasi yun lang ang kayang bayaran ng, ng school. Okay? So, in the case of uh, City of Palabon University, uh, very creative ang management kung saan, kagaya ko, ay a guest lecturer. Ang sweldo ko ay kap hindi kapareho ng mga ordinary teachers. So, meron akong special rate. Dahil uh, gusto kasi nilang haluan ng mga quality teachers ang university. So, kami mga guest lecturers, we try to deliver quality lectures and we're not paid a small amount of money. So, might as well make the most out of it. No? Let's maximize our presence. Okay? Moreover, the perceived stab standard facilities in local colleges and universities are rooted from lack of funding. Napansin nyo between the facilities of a private school and the facilities of a state university and the facilities of a local college and university, mukhang dihadong-dihado ang facilities ng mga LCUs or local colleges and universities. Kasi nga, because of this funding problem. Okay? So, yun ang problema. Kaya hindi sila nakakakuha ng mga quality teachers at saka hindi nakakapagpagawa ng quality facilities. So, uh, nakadepende kasi sa taxes na nakukolekta. Yung kinikita ng uh, city government. Okay? Now, here are the three questions I want you to answer at the end of video lecture number 16. So, you need to put your answers in the comment section. The first question is, can you identify one research problem. Just one. Huwag kayong magsulat ng dalawa o tatlo. One lang ang hinihingi ko. Okay? Then, what is a suitable type of research? Based on the problem that you were able to identify, ano kayang type of research ang bagay dito? And finally, what solution can you suggest to address the research problem that you mentioned? Siyempre, ikaw nagbigay ng problem, ano sa tingin mo ang magandang solution? Based on your research. Okay, so please submit your answers within seven days. Okay, good luck and I'll see you in video lecture number 17.